Hello and welcome. It is the completion of the 11th day of uh, May 2019. My name is Derek. Welcome to the Money Charts channel. 1840 is the time. Let's do multiple time frames. On the one minute term time frame, this thing had a nice little move starting around 5.40 p.m. Eastern time or for the last hour. Going from about 69.50 up to about uh, 73.5, now down to 72.37. So definitely on the volatile situation, which is why I'm showing the one, or else I wouldn't. Five minute term, breaking this level of resistance again, just a nice uh, nice spectacular move. And at least since the uh, start of this in here, there has been very limited action below the 18 lows. Right in here, there was limited time, limited time in here. Uh, limited time down here, again once here, a little bit here, a little bit here. We haven't even seen that 18 now since it has risen. So this breakout starting again at 5.40 p.m. Last hour, pretty decent one. 15 minute term time frame. Same thing as far as just not getting underneath that 18. And even this failed breakdown gets slips below, but that's all it does. And this is just buyers again, buyers in control on every single time frame, single hour chart. Definitely the case there. And this 6350 resistance, yeah. well, well um, I don't know. It doesn't look like there's resistance there. Uh, it's, and my school of thought is if you're not getting resistance where you're supposed to, fast move to next level. Okay, we'll see. But I'm a little shocked that it went to 7250, just a little. But I wouldn't be too shocked if it's tomorrow night and I'm doing a video and I'm saying, okay, we're now breaking 9,000 because it's in the situation in which it can happen. And another way of saying this is now and such. The probability odds, and let's just subtract 9,000 from 72. That's 1,800. So we're looking at, what, 25%? The probability odds of a 25% move in the next 36 hours... It's a lot higher than a lot of the other previous time frames that have came and passed over the last uh, years, close to close to a year, ever since last summer even. And we're going to be getting into that summer when we start taking a look at the weekly and the monthly charts. But on the daily term, nothing but a spectacular uptrend since the 3300 lows back on February the 8th price action. How much has it been below? Okay, well, a little bit of a pierce on February 27th. It pierced below on the 4th, but it quickly regained form, barely went below on the 25th. Again, on that uh, April 25th, and since then, just, this is the highest it's been above it. I mean, this is really overextended, to say the least. It was way overextended here, a little more so now. But just because the market's overextended doesn't mean, oh, it has to stop going higher now. It, it may, and it's it's got to at some point. It's got to crack via that of price or through time. Let's take a look at the weekly. As it had this band flattening out, and it's just having a tremendous move. It, it, it On this one here, is a little bit overextended. It obviously well above the 18, definitely a noticeable high. But it's got a long ways to go before it's really overextended amongst it. But what it's doing, this is the real, real important thing here, is this little uh, support here at around 6,000. That represents the neckline of the monstrous support from February. It had a good rally from there. Uh, Pierce above here, continuous support from uh, middle of June until it broke below it in November. So the, when I look at the oh, possible failed move, and I've drawn, I'm going to draw this line again, this little bit in here. It, it's the long one again because of how long this took, because of this long consolidation. But nonetheless, it's still doing what I need to see it do for this pattern to to reach its parameters and it's whatever you want to call it. It's got to have this box, which means it goes down usually pretty good. And in this case, yep, yeah, definitely. And then just do like a bunch of this. And well, that was that bunch of that in here. Usually it's going to go up like 
it's not going to have this type of little move. But either way, it still does it. Now the big difference is, do you resist that area? Because on a bearish level, for that move not to be that failed move, then what you could oftentimes are going to have happen is you're going to come up to it, but you're going to stop going up, and then you're going to resist it and then eventually break the low. But that's uh, it's not what it's doing right now. I mean, it still can be a large resistance area. It, but if it's going to be that failed move, one of the signs I'm looking for is for it to get back to its previous congestion area, which to me represents all of this stuff in here. A and it's there. It's there. We got an interesting level here at 85. This is really breaking that congestion area level more than somewhere around here. And then you got that big fib level at about 10. And this is a huge level. This is that like this is the overall point A high, point B low failed move line. If it uh, can hold and stay above this line, and then that's giving you indication that this is a failure, you're going to make a higher high from this previous high. But we're not there yet. We're talking about as it is now. If it stays within the congestion area, oftentimes what's going to happen is it's going to spend a little bit of time staying within that area, which would mean something of a... Uh, pattern like this maybe for whatever amount of periods maybe five six weeks or whatever maybe longer and then when you see how it breaks above that level then it's just off to the races and it might not even do that some of the failed moves just get going and it's just wild play and like i've been mentioning the chances it comes up here and we'll be, i'll even use the ten thousand number so it's 72, the differential is like 27 and a half. So whatever that is, is for percentage move, and my math in my head is thinking about 34%. The chances of a 34% right now over the next uh, week, over the next seven days, eight days, next by next Sunday, the following Sunday, is a lot higher than it's been. It's the highest percentage chance of having that move since... Okay, the week after this, it had a pretty good odds, but maybe just that week after here because you're following a monstrous move here. None of these had a good chance of happening. Definitely not after the, well, maybe after the slow, but not really. Def nowhere in here was there ever that type of chance you were going to have. Yep, the 35% move, yeah, pretty okay odds. Now back in here, it was actually happening, some of those... Uh, well, we had a 29% up move here. There was a 31% up move. Those were during the top periods. But we're facing levels where we should be having levels of resistance. We're not. Let's finish this off within the monthly term time frame. And as far as this 18 average of highs, which is in at 6,628, it is obviously now pierced above that level you can again see the failed breakdown on this chart because you have moves that go down there if you have a spot anytime you have a bull market you have a little bit of time that goes below the lows the first time it gets back up to the 18 if it doesn't resist it or more importantly it doesn't resist it to and then break down the 18 lows and then when it gets above the 18 average of highs, well, on 10,000, that would bring up an interesting situation. A lot of big, that, that's a more monster level than, well, the previous two we have been facing, which, of course, is in that of 63 and that last 48. But in a bullish level, what would be expected is maybe you come up to it for a little bit, meet up with the 18 and then breaking it on any type of move like that that's where a very super strong pattern is into place so if something like that was to occur and we'll assume that the month of may it finishes with a green candle that comes up to say 10 or 11 or something in that nature 
And then over the months of, and, and at that spot, it could just shoot up higher. But, but let's just assume that it comes back down to the 18th in June, and then July, you get a green kit or maybe a pause month. Then August, it comes back up to this level. And then September, we have a move that gets above in like the 13th. Well, buying, if you see something like that, it's say 13,405. I'm thinking, okay, that is just a very good entry point to uh, buy long on Bitcoin. And that would be the first time I'd ever say that at anywhere near that price. Because buying it here at 13000 was just a fool's game. But after a successful correction and any type of signs showing otherwise, then uh, that is no longer the case. As when we look at it, from the previous perspective and this one was a slow move getting back to its retracement from the point A high and its point B low. This one still may be as well but that situation would have been like okay you held the 18 in here. Any of these situations in here where you're looking at it okay look at the six seven hundred dollar Bitcoin is it a good time to buy? Well at that time compare buying 700 here and I know it's easy to see based on where the chart was compared to buying here. Market was way overextended at that point in here when you're looking at 700 Bitcoin. Market was rebounding here at 700. So market was way overextended here above 10,000. Much different story next time on such an event. I'm done with Bitcoin for this video. What do we got 11 minutes? I might be able to, I, I will do a bit more. And I'll move on to Theta and I'm patiently waiting for its wallet to go back online for Binance and pick some more up. But I really can't buy right now because I've got no way of putting funds onto such a site. But markets go up, markets go down. When you're looking for big volatility, man, it's just interestingly decent, interesting to say the least. You go from 1200 up to 36, back down to 1200. This time has a nice progressive move from really the end of January all the way up until the uh, the first little bit of March and it goes up to a hair above 5,000 now back down to 1250 again 1268 buy low sell high and if this is going to continue on having volatility what kind of moves are we going to see if and when uh, major bull market runs happen amongst the altcoins it seems more the major cap ones are the ones that are uh, doing well but I have to think that to me this is just tremendous times to uh, turn some of my Bitcoin into coins like this of Theta and and when the wallets are back online uh, I'll check again uh, tomorrow next day until and when I see it is I'll probably accumulate more especially as it continues to go lower but these things are just gonna pop at some point and they usually go up faster and then they go down, and I wouldn't be surprised if this next one would be any exception. Quick look again at Litecoin against the U.S. fiat. 9180, which means it's in this previous level of its uh, resistance here in April. And its next target to me, I think, would be a pierce above the 126. I'd be looking for a move to about 135, I think, in the area if uh, the continuation of the acceleration and a break above 100 I just play if this can hold and stay above uh, the 100 ish area 98 97 for more than about a uh, few dozen hours two three days then that would be a nice little uh, strong setup moving forward I think and what we'll do is we'll take a look at coin market cap to finish this and of course Bitcoin up 12.8 percent Ethereum overperforming Bitcoin let's uh, see how everything else is doing against Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin cash up 6.83 percent then we have the tether of course I can't say it wow tether is down 11 percent against the dollar no against Bitcoin no, okay never mind never mind that's normal that's normal. That's normal. I'm used to I'm used to the, uh, the this against the dollar. Anyway, Cardano's Cardano's got a nice little move. We got uh, everything else just small bits. Basic attention down ten percent against Bitcoin. USD coin. That's like another tether, I guess. 
as is true US dollar down 11 percent Paxo standard I'm guessing that might be the same as well 7% down for Zilk. Yeah, I mean, I got spammed on this coin by so often, especially back in the day. Most of the spam gets hidden, but that also means some real true com uh, uh, comments do as well. Komodo down 6, Pundi X down 7, Huobi token down 10 and a third percent. And nothing too exciting here. 17%. What the heck is next? I'll have to take a look at that because. I have never heard of that. Dollar fifty two, it's up thirty two percent against the dollar, up seventeen percent against BTC. It's been down. Let's take a look at this on a log scale. Just breaking out above this key level of resistance. Where does it get traded? On Coinbit. Bitcur, live coin. So I would not be trading this at all. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye bye.